Nobles, you have just completed your rugged trek across the hot sands of the desert in search of the great Muslim capital Mecca, which unfolds in the wilderness of the Arabian desert, halfway between Yemen and Syria. This city in which you now stand is the holy city of Islam. It is so situated in the desert of Arabia that only by constant trials and tribulations, by passing through hazards, sandstorms, being beset by thieves, and experiencing other catastrophes, were you able to walk therein. It is as if nature had cooperated with the Muslim faith in guarding the secrets of this hallowed spot from the unsanctified. In the heart of the city is the great mosque, Bayit Allah, House of God, the altar, which is situated according to Arab tradition in the center of the world and immediately beneath the throne of the Almighty. Upon the Bayit Allah altar are a Bible and a Quran. The Quran is the unique history of our founder Muhammad. It is absolutely unique in its origin and in its preservation upon the authenticity of which no one has ever been able to cast a serious doubt. The Quran is the actual text as dictated by Muhammad himself day by day and month by month during his lifetime. It is a reflection of this mastermind sometimes inartistic and self-contradictory, more often inspiring and lyrical, and always filled with great ideas which stand out as a whole. The black stone is really a number of fragments, twelve to be exact, united by dark cement and held together by a silver band. The hole is oval and about seven inches in diameter. What these stones or fragments are made of no one has ever been able to definitely establish. Tradition asserts that the original Kaaba uh, came from paradise and was handed by the angel Gabriel uh, to Abraham and Ishmael when they were building the Kaaba. At the time, its color was snow white. Its present color is the outcome of having been kissed by the millions who each year make the pilgrimage to Mecca. This, however, does not clear up the question of its composition. The obstacle to so doing is that the vast majority of the men who go to Mecca view the black stone as a holy emblem and do not worry about its geological history. Those travelers who examine the stone with curiosity as well as reverence differ in their opinions. Some say that it is a chip of rock from the Abu Kobe's hills to the east of Mecca. Some say it is a meteorite, an object usually composed of iron that has fallen upon the earth from outer space. Others insist it is of volcanic origin. None of this is of any real importance in spite of the controversies it has given rise to on various occasions. Regardless of its composition, the stone has been there a long time. Mosimus Tyreus, writing in the second century after Christ, spoke of Arabians praying to God, which they worshipped as a rectangular building in which there was a black stone. Some of you may ask, why do we use the black stone? Why is it so sacred to us? In ancient times, the sacred stone held a place of great honor. The black rock of Mecca is still an object of Mohammedan veneration. Stones have their own characteristics. If it was a big one, it impressed people by its massiveness. Perhaps it had some peculiar shape, looked like a man or a superman. If it was a little one, it could be carried in the pocket or set up on the tent. Little or big, it was solid, substantial, did not change like a brook or a stream, and man had not made it. It uh, was a present from heaven because it came fresh from the hand of God. And thus, the, the black rock is revered by shrine them to this day. Christ said to Peter, Upon this rock 
I will build my church. This allegorical statement is similar to our symbolic masonry of today. Christ was impressed by the sincere, loyal, and, way, and reverent way in which Peter had followed him. So he likened his faith to a rock, which is able to withstand the storms of time. Let us as true Arabs stand firm in our convictions that coming generations will have faith in us and build their tomorrow on our solid foundation of fraternal stability. Mecca, the city of Muhammad, is known as the capital of Shrine. Muhammad chose this city as its capital because it was where the Banu Kanana had formed a settlement around the Kaaba, a sanctuary of a number of Confederate tribes belonging to the district. The feast annually observed in the days before the full moon of the month Dilhija at Mecca presented strong attraction to all the inhabitants of the vicinity thereabout. And thus Mecca grew into a great meeting place. The sanctuary and the feast of Mecca caused it to grow into a great meeting place. Mecca unfolds in the wilderness of the Arabian desert, halfway between Yemen and Syria, in a land wasted by winds and secular rains, a savage valley enclosed between two sharp, arid chains of rock mountains, making its position so secluded that not until the travelers are looking down into its streets do they know they have arrived at the holy city. Long before Muhammad, Mecca was considered a sacred city because of the holy sanctuary in its center. In the middle of the court stands the Kaaba. The Kaaba is a huge, windowless, uh, cube-shaped, flat room building uh, enveloped by uh, dark cement. And enveloping it is a huge black brocade cover like a tea cozy on which verses from the Quran are embroidered in gold. Each year the cover, which is called Kesela, is renewed. Legends suggest that the original Kaaba dates back to Adam. After that, it was destroyed in the deluge. Later, it was rebuilt by Abraham and Ishmael, and then it fell into the hands of idolaters who had added other additions until Muhammad came and destroyed, or rather restored, its ancient dedication to one God. Seven smaller buildings surround the Kaaba. The most important contains the well of Zimzim. This is where Hagar, when she was expelled from the tents of Abraham through the instigation of Sarah, decided to die. Wandering across the desert, she had reached the stony valley of Mecca. Her provisions had given out. Her gourd was empty. Frenziedly, she ran to and fro looking for water. Then finally, nearly dead from thirst, she threw herself on the parched earth and pushed her baby under a thorny acacia. Let me not see the death of my child, she cried as she covered her head with her mantle. And then, what seemed inevitable happened. An angel appeared and showed Hagar she was within walking distance of a well. Hagar could no longer walk, but crawled over to the well, which saved her and Ishmael's lives. This Zim Zim is the very same well, so-called because of the bubbling sound it made when Hagar found it. If we are to believe the book of Genesis, it is one of the most oldest existing wells of the world.